Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Jaime and I run one of the leading social media marketing agencies in the world, helping transform e-commerce brands into market leaders. Now, what I want to do in this video is share with you the top three killer mistakes that you're making with your cold emails. These mistakes cost me a lot of pain, a lot of sweat and tears, and most importantly, a lot of money. And they're probably doing the same for you because these are three very common cold email and outreach mistakes in the social media marketing agency space, in the agency space in general. So if you want to know how to solve these mistakes and what to say instead, all you got to do is keep on watching. Now, the first mistake comes down to deliverability. A lot of people talk about what to actually say on the emails, what to write, what type of email copy uh, to write, which usually, by the way, is completely backwards, as I'll share with you in just a few minutes. But no one pays attention to the deliverability component. Is this email actually going to land in their inbox? Because quite frankly, you can have the best email copy in the world. If it doesn't land in their inbox, if it doesn't get open, then there's no point, right? And so when it comes to deliverability, people are making two core mistakes. Number one is sending emails to email addresses that are not personal. I'm talking about support at nike.com or contact at or hello at, right? These emails are not personal and they're really bad quality emails because if you're contacting support or customer service, their core mission is to attend to customers. They probably already have quite a bit on their plate and they're just completely going to ignore any email that is not customer service or a customer inquiring about something about the brand or anything that does not relate to the brand or the customers. Anything that is external is going to get ignored. So that is the first mistake. And the second mistake is not understanding how the email algorithm works, right? If you want to land in people's inboxes so that you can actually get your emails open, you want to make sure that your email address is warmed up so that email gateways let your email through, right? If they see that your email is not warmed up or that it has a negative score because you haven't really sent many emails or you haven't really received any emails, it's probably going to mark it as spam and you're never going to reach their inbox. So it is absolutely crucial to warm up your email and increase the health of your email address. There's a few things that you should be taking a look at. Number one is SPF. Number two is Dickim. Number three is DMARC. And number four is a custom domain. I'm not going to get into each of those because quite frankly, it's a bit boring. And not only that, but this video would go on for 25 minutes. But the great thing is that most people never talk about SPFs or DMARCs or DKIMs. And now you know. So go ahead and do a bit more research on those and make sure that they're implemented for your email address. It's going to yield a higher deliverability rate and it's going to build your reputation for your email address. So that is the false killer cold email mistake. And now to the second one. Now, the next mistake people are making is uh, they're not smashing the like button for the algorithm. In all seriousness, guys, it really helps out a ton with the algorithm, the whole channel, and uh, keeps me motivated to create these videos for you guys so you can kill it with your agency and crush it with your sales and outreach. So if you're finding value in these videos, go ahead and smash the like button for the algorithm. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. The second killer cold email mistake is the overall tone of the email. Now, I've done a few videos on my channel already where I analyze word by word what a good email should look like. But as an overall mistake that people are making is that your tone of email is very aggressive and very condescending. And quite frankly, Frankly, if you use this tone, I don't blame you because it seems like it's the general consensus in the space, right? But you need to understand that if you approach a prospect, especially if it's a big e-commerce brand or any founder that is successful, if you approach them with a very condescending and aggressive tone, you're going to repel, right? People are chasing good emotions. And so if you go at them and you attack their business and the way they're doing things, that's going to create really bad emotions, right? You're going to repel them. It's the exact same way that if you're meeting someone for the first time and straight off the bat without building rapport with you, without being your friend, they criticize the way you dress or the way you style your hair or the way you talk, right? That's going to create bad emotions and you're probably not going to want to be friends with that person. However, if a good friend comes to me or a mentor or someone I respect and they give me feedback or they criticize some of the things that I'm doing, I know they're coming from a frame where they want to help me. They want to add value to me because they care about me and they have love for me. This is especially important if you're reaching out to a marketing department. If you reach out to a marketing department and you are aggressive or you are condescending and you tell them you're leaving money on the table and you're not doing this and this and that, right? That's going to create really bad emotions, especially because they're not emotionally tied to the business, right? And so they're getting paid a fake salary for a job you're telling them they're doing incredibly wrong. And so straight out the bat, they don't like you. And number two, they fear that you're going to take their job. So is that deal ever going to happen? Absolutely not. They're not even going to start the negotiation. They're not even going to begin the talks with you, right? And so it's very important that number one, you understand who you're speaking to. If you're speaking to a founder who is just getting started, right, and they are very emotionally tied to the business, sure, being a bit more aggressive and conveying what they're doing wrong might work better. But in most cases, that's really going to repel a lot of people. And the way you want to approach it instead is from a frame where you want to help them, you want to add value to them, because there's a few areas where you are just an expert, right? 
and you truly believe that you can add a whole new dimension to their business in that facet, right? That is so much more positive and that is something that they're gonna be willing to listen to. And that is something that's much more likely to resonate with them and to land much better. To close this point off, the other day I was going through my free Facebook masterminds. It's an incredible community, by the way, if you're not part of it, I highly recommend it, uh, full of agency owners just looking to scale up uh, and change their lives. But essentially I saw this guy who posted a really rude response uh, from a cold email that he has sent. Um, basically the prospect was really mad, uh, was really rude as well. Um, and there's absolutely no doubt that there are people who are very rude, who are having a bad day and they will respond very angrily to your email. And yeah, overall they're very rude and it's not something that you wanna see because sure you should just ignore it and move on to the next one, but it kind of hurts, especially when you are just starting out. Now I got a few of those at the beginning of my journey, um, but when I actually changed my tone of email, right? And it wasn't so aggressive and so condescending. I actually stopped getting some of those responses. And obviously bear in mind, it wasn't like hundred a day, right? Of, of those responses, but it was maybe one, two, uh, every single month. And now maybe it's like one every six months, because obviously you're always going to have that person who's just angry at themselves and, and who's just having a really, really bad day. But my point is if you're getting really bad responses, right? And you're also not getting really good responses. That's probably because you're triggering your prospects, right? And your prospects really do not like the tone of your email. So don't just listen to the people that tell you, oh, just brush it off and you know keep going, right? They're just having a bad day. It's a reflection of you know their reality, not, not yours, right? No, as much as they are rude, that is absolutely true, right? You wanna make sure that you tweak your tone if you're getting a lot of that, right? Because it's simply too aggressive and too condescending. So that is the second killer cold email mistake. And now to the final mistake. The third killer cold email mistake is the email copy. And the main mistake around the email copy is the fact that it is not personalized to the prospect. An email copy right from the batch should address why this is for them and why this is important right now. Why they should actually take two to three minutes out of their day, right, out of what they're doing to read your email, right? So it should really hook them in and to hook them in, it needs to be personalized, right? Now, it doesn't mean that you have to personalize every single email and bang out, you know, hundreds of personalized manual emails every single day. What I have in place and what I teach my students, for example, is a personalized automation method um, through an automated sales funnel, okay? But there has to be a personalization element. Automation, just pure automation, does not work, right? Simply send it to thousands of people every single day, a cookie cutter uh, email template does not work, but the extremely personalized and manual method also does not work, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't wanna spend six to eight hours every single day sending out cold emails to people that don't even care about me and haven't actually shown an interest in my service. So that's the first thing that you wanna keep in mind when it comes to the email copy. And the second thing is, I see a lot of people get straight into what they're offering and what the service is, right? That is not the right approach because it tells the prospect, hey, they don't really care about my problem. They haven't even diagnosed what my problem really is. And they're right away offering their service, right? And so again, it is not personalized to them. It is not tailored to what they actually need, right? And so the goal of the email should be to address some of the things that they're lacking and some of the things where you could come in and really kill it for them. And number two, the importance of doing so. And then you wanna pitch the value and the no-brainer nature of a very quick um, demo call or a discovery call or a breakthrough session, whatever you wanna call it, uh, with you. So that is that for the email copy and that is the third killer email copy mistake that you're probably making that I made when I started out. Um, and uh, that is that for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed these strategies. Hopefully you can implement them into your outreach and sales and uh, really take things up a level. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a massive thumbs up. It helps a ton with the algorithm and the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check those out. If you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on social media marketing agency, entrepreneurship, personal development, and a host of other topics where I show you how to level up as an entrepreneur and scale your agency past the six figure marks. So if you don't wanna miss any of that, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon. And if you haven't joined my free Facebook mastermind, the one I spoke about previously, I don't know what you're doing. It's an incredible community. We're already 2K plus members and it's growing at an incredible pace. Um, so if you want to join that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Go ahead and apply. And if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.